I'm here with Jason Vasquez. And Hey, my name is Jason Vasquez, and this video is going to go over the design, testing, and first competition for my new three pound robot zero zero. I think the design is pretty unique, and I've documented it all pretty closely, so I'm excited to get into this. So, considering I've been in the sport for so long now, whenever I build a new robot, I really try and do something that's creative and unique. And my good friend Tommy Wong developed this robot called Droopy which has actually won two world titles at NHRL and has proven itself, in my opinion, to be the best robot in the weight class. There have been a few other builders that have copied his design and I think copying is the sincerest form of flattery, but I wanted to put a very unique spin on this robot and get a lot more mass into the spinning weapons. So this was an idea that as soon as I sketched out on paper, I knew I just had to do it. I wanted to be the first person to make it. And pretty much the design consists of a walker style robot like Droopy that uses gyroscopic forces to kind of wobble across the arena. And I wanted to build each disc or bar as you would build a melty brain robot. So a melty brain robot is a robot that revolves around itself, driving on the floor, and just can veer in a certain direction. But since I figured it's hard to make those robots move in a controlled manner, I might as well make two of them, connect them by a bar that they drive on and control it that way so that I get a weight advantage and I could get more weight into the spinning mass than the standard robot in the weight class. Lately with my robot builds, I've been spending a lot more time in CAD and a lot less time actually building them because the more you plan ahead, the easier it is to just assemble it and get it testing. So I started doing PLA prototypes before ordering the final print material. And luckily each body could print on a bamboo printer pretty easily. So I was printing frame after frame and I had already ordered the electronics. So I just wanted to make sure they were fitting into the body properly and I wanted to make sure the weight distribution was starting to make sense. I worked on the weight distribution very closely. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out a way to get the weight distribution of parts that have non-uniform infill. There was nothing online that could help me. And I ended up just post-processing the balance the last little bit in real life. So once I was finalized with the CAD and I had it to the point where I knew I wanted to compete with it, I ordered the final build materials. And part of that was ordering the water jet parts because I don't have access to a water jet cutter in my city. So I knew there was no going back. I wouldn't be able to test the design without using the final build materials because the whole system would be off balance and not strong enough in the prototype materials. So if I were to spin it up and test it before paying for the final materials, it would almost guarantee to explode. And that was not something I was interested in. So I had to take a big leap of faith and just buy all the water jet parts and buy all the final materials. And to help me take that leap of faith, I posted the CAD online and shared it with a lot of other builders that I respect and have become friends with. I got mostly positive feedback with only some concerns, but I was happy I did it and I moved forward with the design. So while I waited for the final materials and water jet parts to ship, I started soldering up all the electronics that I had. So I bought three sets of electronics, I needed two for one robot, and I had one full set of spares. And I battle hardened them as best that I could using epoxy to pop them. And I was very tedious in the wiring process because I knew if any one component died, one of the zeros would die, one of the discs, and then I would lose the fight. So it's very critical in this robot for everything to go smoothly or else it's all downhill from there. So once I got the final water jet parts, I assembled them onto my PLA prints with the electronics inside and I was very happy with how everything fit. And I moved immediately to printing in the new bamboo material that's nylon carbon fiber and the first print did not work at all. The tolerances were terrible. It was over what it said it would be in the slicer. And it was mostly because of the material not being fully dried out. This was my first time using this material and there were some growing pains that I should have seen in hindsight. But with these being $25 prints, I had to get my act together before continuing to iterate. 
one or two were not gonna be able to be used in combat. So each print took the majority of a day and I was trying to be patient in between pressing print so that I wouldn't be wasting material or money. And during the time each body was printing, I was fortunate enough to be able to use my old campus's machine shop. And since I'm alumni now, I'm not allowed to use the heavy machinery that's meant for students and students have to sign waivers for. And luckily, one of my old teachers, Harold, a great machinist, helped me on all these parts and I am very grateful for Harold's help. So one crazy coincidence about working with Harold was he had worked on a combat robot before. And funnily enough, it was before I was born in 1995. He helped out a friend at his work to work on a robot called Thor for the American Robot Wars and not to be mistaken with Thor in UK Robot Wars. You know, I built, I was on the team, built one of the first Robo Warriors. Yeah. So, called Thor. Yeah. yeah. But it's crazy he hasn't interacted with the sport since, and it's been over 20 years since he's touched a combat robot, and it's working on my three pounders. So I just thought that was a really crazy coincidence, and it was really kind of cool that he was up to helping me. Once the prints for the bodies were coming out with the correct weight and the correct tolerances, and I was done machining all the parts in the machine shop, I knew it was time to assemble and get testing. And I knew this would determine if the robot would be a force to be reckoned with, or if the project would be dead in the water. I had already spent all the money I planned to spend on this project on it, and if it didn't gyro walk, I knew the project would be dead. I needed this to work. So I knew with building a robot this unique, with this much self-destructive potential, that testing would be extremely important for the success of this design. Luckily, I had built an arena with the school club that I founded for combat, and I was able to test pretty much every other day for over a week. And in this testing, I found it pretty difficult to control the design. So I was very fortunate that I had the time to learn to control it, but I still wasn't where I wanted to be at the time of the event. So in my first fight, I did run my most conservative configuration with both of the discs as high as possible. And unfortunately, this was just whiffing right over the top of my opponent. I barely made any contact, although I was able to knock off his blade. But with one of the discs going down, I knew I wasn't gonna win the judges' decision. This robot makes it extremely hard to win judges' decisions. And this fight, I knew would result in a loss. In my next fight, I fought a good friend of mine, Cormac, from the combat club that I started here at Chico State. And he said he built this wedge in two days, which is pretty cool. And I remember doing that back in the day just to get out there and get some driving practice. But if I lost to this thing, I would have been bummed because I had spent so much money at this point and so much time perfecting my design. And luckily, I came out with a win. Oh! Oh, interesting, like, pivots around the other module. Zero, zero, it's a unique hybrid between a grouping robot, a shuffle bot, a bristle leg. It's, it's a lot of different robot concepts melded into one. Shove off. Do you have any movement at all? Or counting you out in her. Three, two, one. Zero, zero, it's a unique hybrid between a grouping robot, a shuffle bot, a bristle leg. It's, it's a lot of different robot concepts melded into one. Shove off. Do you have any movement at all? Or counting you out in her. Three, two, one. You're winner in zero, zero. They're moving on. So when I went up against this undercutter, I was pretty concerned. I knew they had more reach than me, and at one point in the fight, they flipped me over, and I had never driven the robot upside down before. In CAD, I was pretty confident about how it would stand upside down, but I had no clue how it would walk. And luckily, I seemed to have better movement. Go 
much energy in this box right now. Accelerator punched the wall. Oh! Is that electronics or is that battery? Is that fire? It's on fire. There it is. Now they're moving. The weapon on accelerator is fully down now. It's not a wizard war of attrition. It's just not a... Oh! Like a WWE move, slams on top of the opponent. Accelerator, I need motion. Five, four, three, two, one. Your winner by knockout is zero, zero. They're moving on. So two of my fights resulted in a win from the opponent not having much control movement. And usually I would take these wins as something to be proud about, but considering how much time and effort I put into getting my robot to move at all, I was so grateful that I got those wins. Five, four, So in the finals of the loser bracket, I went up what I like to consider a Lynx clone. And usually, I don't like fighting Lynx clones, but considering I have a Droopy clone, I figured it was a fair match. But considering my weapons are discs and not bars, I knew there would be a lot of area for his weapon to hit me where I don't want to get hit. And I got beat up pretty bad. But considering this event was intended to be a learning experience from the start, I was so happy to walk away with the medal. And his robot deserved the win on that fight, and it made for an amazing match against another great builder. The one, the only, the very unique, zero, zero. So although my brother and I have been competing on a professional level for over the last decade, I paid for this robot entirely out of pocket. So a big part of making this video is in search for new sponsors. And I would love to hear from anybody about a company they work for or a company they know about that would be interested in helping us out. We've been doing this for our whole lives. We plan to continue doing this. It is our passion and we would love to hear from whoever is interested. So this is zero zero after the event. There are some pretty gnarly gashes in it, but it held up extremely well for it being a first event and it only died in its last fight because of a bullet connector coming unplugged. I know I should be taping my connectors, but in testing, they didn't unplug once, and I tested it pretty thoroughly, and I was happy with how it performed, so I'm not upset about it. Zero, zero.